Good morning, observers. Today we're hitting some cool science on exoplanets, a new satellite radar for ground changes, a first ever weather event in the United States, and of course, we're starting with space weather in the last 24 hours on our star. M-class solar flares are returning with greater frequency, three of them in the last day, with two producing CME signatures worth analyzing a bit more. We'll do that here for each of the CMEs. At least one is already forecast to impact Earth in about two days, and then we'll hit the sunspots. So the first flare was right after yesterday morning's show. NASA's Enlil Spiral, Stereo, Soho, pretty much everything indicates a good chance for a mild Earth impact late Friday night. NOAA's official forecast has that as well, mild, but still with a chance to produce low-level geomagnetic storms. Then, just a few minutes before this show, this erupted, the third M-class flare the last day, and it'll be a few hours until coronagraphs update on that one. Meanwhile, while we wait to diagnose that CME, we're also monitoring the sunspots for more flares. The most dangerous groups are beginning to turn away. The central, trailing groups do appear significantly smaller. Up next, folks, we talked about this a few times last week, the Arctic air intrusion. Yesterday, it created the first ever blizzard warning on the coastline of the Gulf of America, smashing snow records, cold records, and bringing white conditions from Texas to Florida. Earth global warming all over the south yesterday. Up next, this is so cool. They were able to trace supersonic winds in the upper atmosphere of an exoplanet. This is the level up that new scopes and satellites are delivering. By being able to spot regional and even localized light sources on the planet, they're able to see how some were moving violently fast. It's a new era in astronomy here. Lastly, on the article front, folks, the new ground level change monitors are about a hundred times the resolution of the old one. With NISAR, they'll be able to detect subtle lift and drop like before volcanoes due to erosion, due to earthquakes, and even isostatic readjustment, what some call post-glacial rebound. They need to point that thing at Campy Flegry and just let it stare. Folks, thank you for the lovely outpouring of support on the channel name change. It was long overdue. Look at the end of it. You can see the S0 in parentheses at the end of the name. This will always be the home of the suspicious observers. Anyone here from the old era can put that in your name if you want to show the OG status. Shout out to goldobservers.com. If you don't know, they are sponsoring our documentary on the pole shift. They are observers themselves. And for that window between the system collapse and the actual pole shift, every serious prepper I know has either gold or silver or both. They made this site for you and they're working to spread our message goldobservers.com. Learn more about the pole shift in person at one of our conferences at Observer Ranch. Don't forget the two special kickoff events of the season with Doctors Robitaille and Dunning in late April and early May. Come out and see us. It begins at observerranch.com. And if you need to, just call us. We'll get you sorted out. We greatly appreciate your support. We'll do this all again tomorrow, right here. But right now, it's 5.45 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.